On the line with us, our buddy uh, Dean Obadala, my colleague here on Sirius XM. His program runs from 6 to 9 p.m., the, the Dean Obadala Show uh, on Sirius XM Progress Channel 127. He's a columnist with CNN.com and a contributor to the New Republic. DeanofRadio.com is his website. Uh, Dean Obidala, O-B-E-I-D-A-L-L-A-H on Twitter. And uh, Dean, uh, first of all, welcome back to the program. And Sure. Uh, thanks for joining us. I, I read your piece uh, that you published over at CNN.com, uh, you know, and specifically, uh, you know, this is about uh, Twitter opening back up to, to, to Nazis. Um, I, I don't know if you've been losing Twitter followers since these changes happened. I've lost about 6,000, I think. Um, and, but I understand that the right wing uh, people on Twitter are gaining followers like mm -hmm. there's no tomorrow. But specifically, you were talking about Andrew Anglin. Um, tell us about this guy and, your, and sure. your, your experience with him. And I've lost followers as well. And it makes sense that people on the right are getting followers because Elon Musk is literally allowing neo-Nazis back online, okay? Andrew Anglin is the founder of The Daily Stormer. The Daily Stormer is a white supremacist publication named after Hitler's favorite publication, Der Sturmer. It's the English translation of Hitler's favorite publication. Andrew England has literally said that his operating principle is, what would Hitler do? He's called for tearing down the Holocaust Memorial and building a massive statue to Adolf Hitler. He has spewed hate against Jews, blacks, Muslims, gays, women, and the list goes on. And for me, what was personal is that in 2017, before Charlottesville, I wrote an article for the Daily Beast on how Trump is not denouncing white supremacist terrorism, because there already were some incidences. And Andrew Anglin, who for years during the campaign, all in for Trump, they love Trump, they viewed him as a god, literally attacked me. He fabricated tweets in my name saying I was involved in a terrorist attack that happened at that time in Manchester, England, you know, because I'm Muslim, that's what he did. But he also wrote it almost like in a language I would write it as a Muslim, writing it sort of, uh, sort of expression, using expressions from that Muslims do use. Now he couldn't post them on Twitter, but he wrote them and posted them in the Daily Stormer, and the white supremacists and the Nazis who read it, he said to them, go confront Dean. And they did, and they inundated me with death threats and vile attacks, that's what they do. So from there, I think his hope was I was going to cower in fear, but I'm half Sicilian, so that doesn't happen. <laughs> so I got lawyers, my, my first instinct was different, but my brain, my legal mind as a lawyer said, okay, you can't go fight him personally, so I got lawyers from Muslim Advocates, a great organization that helped me out for free. We sued Andrew England. We got a judgment for $4.1 million against him in 2019. And I'm not the only one who got a judgment. A woman named Tanya Gersh, who's Jewish, he incited threats, death, and violence against her. And she's Jewish, a young African-American student, same thing. And this is the guy, no one is clamoring for Andrew England and neo-Nazis to be online. No one's saying you're commitment to free speech includes neo-Nazis in civilized society. But Elon Musk thought it was a good business move to bring Nazis back on, because somehow he's going to profit off it somewhere in this big picture. So that is that is Andrew Englin, and Elon Musk letting him back on was, in my view, to normalize Nazis. There's no other way I can look at it. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it, and I, don't, I can't disagree with that. Um, I, there is, a, I think, a larger issue here um, and you, you reference this at the very end of your article on CNN.com. Uh, we're talking with Dean Obidala, um, in which you, you point out that you know, Twitter is a privilege, not a right. Running a, running a social media platform is not an absolute right in America, and, and uh, running any business is not a right in America. And, and it raises the question, you know, how do we handle this? Um, I, I remember in, in, the, in, in the late 1970s, uh, CompuServe came online, and, and uh, uh, a few years later, America Online. And, but CompuServe was the internet for a long time. I mean, this was literally, I went to a CompuServe meeting in Columbus, Ohio, where the, there was like about 100 of us who were running forums on CompuServe. I was running about 30 of them, including the IBM PC forum and the Macintosh forum and the, you know, the, the JFK assassination forum and all kinds of stuff. And, right. and at this meeting, they introduced us to this brand new thing called hypertext markup language, HTML. And it's going to revolutionize you know, the internet. I mean, literally, there was no internet at that time. So anyhow, we had, because I was, I was running these forums, and people could post on these forums, and they could say any old crazy thing they wanted, we had to, two, we had to deal with two things. Number one, nobody could post unless they used their real name. 
And so, you know, there was some level of accountability. And then number two, even people using their own name, if they posted something that was defamatory or, you know, blatantly illegal or whatever, um, you know, we had to eliminate their, their membership in CompuServe, just refuse to take their credit card any longer and not let them on the platform. Well, in the 90s, along came Section 230 of the Telecommunications Act in 1996. This was, you know, Bill Clinton signed this law. And that, at that, that was when CompuServe died. I mean, basically, that was when the whole, you know, ev all the forums and all the discussion areas and everything just kind of all rapidly moved into HTML, moved onto the web. And uh, it's been the wild, wild west ever since. And I've been saying for some time, I wrote a book about this, The Hidden History of Big Brother, that it's time to undo Section 230. I'm curious your thoughts on that. Certainly, there has to be accountability for people who are making millions and billions of dollars tra opening a platform online. Now, it would be a reasonable request. It's, it can't be any, if someone posts something, it's gotta be taken down in five seconds or you're gonna be liable, that would be unfair to them. But if there's got to be some kind of standards and that if you're going to allow people, the public, to use your platform and you're going to profit off that, then you have an obligation to moderate. And, and I mean moderate in terms of content supervision about what's out there and what's not. It is your platform. He, Elon Musk owns Twitter. Nobody has a right to go on Twitter. The Nazis can't say we have a right to go on Twitter. There's no government action. The First Amendment is not implicated here at all. And so Elon Musk has an obligation. In my view, I agree with you 100% that these companies should no longer have that immunity. It should be akin to newspapers, although the argument would be newspapers have more control over what's on their platform, but something in between the two where you give them a reasonable opportunity in terms of time to remove content, and they don't, and they're gonna be held liable. And I say that as a lawyer, trying to look for a legally sustainable, one with a track record that could actually work. So somewhere in between where you're, you give them notice, and they don't take it down, you expose them to liability. Because right now, Elon Musk has no, no incentive to do the right thing. That's why I'm hoping advertisers don't return. And I hope people, if you're still on Twitter, tag advertisers and ask them why they're giving money to a platform that is allowing Nazis on it. And that's not me, Tom, as I wrote in the article. New York Times had a great article on Friday quantifying the rise in hate, cry, hate speech under Elon Musk's rule. We have triple the amount of anti-black racism online, 60% increase in anti-Semitism online, a huge jump in anti-gay slurs online. It's not a coincidence, it's under, it's under Elon Musk. He laid people off, he doesn't want to spend money on people working there to look at content. The result is the worst of the worst. He's extended a privilege to the worst of the worst, and he does not care. And yeah. that's the worst part of Elon Musk. Doesn't well, care. it's uh, yeah, and 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 I get it. You're you're you know you want to focus this on Elon Musk. I I think that this is a larger and more systemic problem right across social media, and and you know it has to do with that issue of liability. I mean, I I don't see how Facebook is that much different. You know, January sixth was planned on Facebook by and mm -hmm. large. Um, you know, the, there's all kinds of you know right wing crimes and hate that that are planned on Facebook. A lot of these groups still exist. They're they're you know private groups. They're not being uh, rooted out the way they should be, in my opinion. Um, and, 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 and of course, you know, there's, there's other social media sites as well. Those, those two, Twitter and Facebook, are the big two, though. I, it seems to me that rather than just railing against Elon Musk or trying to organize an advertiser boycott, um, we should be using our, our platforms and whatever influence we have to try to encourage Congress to, 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 to take this on, to amend uh, Section 230 of the Telecommunications Act and and like you said, dial back that limits those limits on liability. I agree, and at the very least, that can't happen. Congressman Ro Khanna years ago had a bill of rights that he's proposing for users of online platforms, yep. which I liked as well, which would protect people and establish some kind of due process. Right now, there's no due process, meaning you could be banned from Facebook, and you have no idea what recourse is. There's no set way to appeal it. Oh, it happened. Know what you did. Right, it happened to me several times. Yeah. And I would post on other social media platforms, can anyone help me? And a lot of times I was lucky, someone worked at the platform and say, what's going on? They'd email me, I'd email them, and we would rectify it. But if you don't have any contacts, you don't, have, you don't know where your rights are. And if we're gonna argue that these platforms are somehow some kind of digital town hall forum, there must be due process. And due process in this scenario is simply laying out what the rights and obligations are of the users and the privileges of them, and also your rights and your remedies if you are wronged in case someone used the platform to smear you or to incite hate. What kind of liability for the company? Or what are your rights to get your account reinstated? There's nothing out there. You have no clue. You are literally 
relying on the the kindness of strangers. You know, that doesn't work. These are big businesses. They're big corporations. Right. You need a whole set articulated very clearly. Here are the rules. Here's how you get recourse if you're wronged on it. And they don't want to do that. They really don't want to put and I, your and rights. I, no, because it's, it, it would slightly reduce their profits. But, but, I, but I do think it would make for a healthier uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, LinkedIn, what, you know, you just go through all the lists. Um, I, I think this would, this would benefit these companies to do this, frankly. I, I agree. Why not make the consumer experience better? You're making money from us. I think everyone knows this by now. We are the product on Facebook. We are the product on Twitter. So why not make our experience better by giving us a set of bill, a bill of rights for us, which says, Here, here's the protections we're going to get. We want to know that. It would make more people comfortable, have their children on it, themselves on it. But they're doing the wrong thing from a business choice, bad business decision. There you go. Uh, Dean Obadala, you can hear him here on uh, Sirius XM. Uh, 6 to 9 p.m. here on uh, Sirius XM Progress, channel 127, the host of the Dean Obidala Show. Dean, thanks so much for dropping by. Thanks, Tom. Good talking to you. We'll be right back. Nice chatting with you. Thank you.